Hey everybody, it's Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number six, Tools of the Trade. So I thought uh, before I get too far in doing this, I would share some of the, the software and the stuff that I'm going to be using in these podcasts as we move forward. Uh, if you've been watching since the beginning, you know I started out with a three-part series on converting a Photoshop mock-up uh, into an HTML and CSS website and I was using a bunch of software and I was jumping around and I didn't really explain what I was using so uh, many of you probably have recognized a lot of the stuff I mean they're just it's just text editors and image editing software it's nothing too fancy but there is a lot of different tools as a web designer and I thought I would take the opportunity here to share a bunch of those tools that I use so we're all familiar so you at least know when I'm jumping f back and forth between as I do these podcasts. So let's get started going through that software. Okay, so check this out. This is a folder with a bunch of aliases of the software that I use to work on designing websites. Um, it should be pretty obvious by now. I'm on a Mac. I use Macs. Um, it's probably pretty doubtful that I'll, I'll ever do a, a version of this on a PC. I'm sure there's great tools. I mean, they make a lot of these same exact tools for the PC. Some of them not. But uh, this is, you know, not necessarily Mac-oriented. Any of the techniques that I talk about uh, are replicatable, of course. Uh, on a Mac or a PC, but these tools and these podcasts are going to be kind of, you know, shot on a Mac with using Mac tools. So let's start right at the top. I have these kind of in rows about how I want to talk about them. Number one, Photoshop and Coda. Photoshop by Adobe is a, a you know web design staple. It's image editing software. There's a lot of stuff in Photoshop just for the web and a, a pretty decent uh, exporting of images, optimizing them, making them small file sizes for the web, and just, you know, a very powerful tool. Coda is kind of, <laughs> it's not hard to explain, but it's just a, it's a lot of things in one. It's a text editor. It's an FTP client. It's a terminal access program and it has a bunch of reference materials all built into it. It's kind of like this little miracle product for web designers. Uh, it's by Panic Software, who made a really popular FTP program called Transmit that tons of Mac people used. They took, it's you know, it's the same engine as Transmit, only they just built in a text editor along with it, and it's it's not just any text editor, it's, it's, a, it's a full coders text editor meaning it's got code highlighting and uh, autocomplete and that type of stuff maybe we can pop it open and take a look at it quick this is what the main coda window window looks like uh, you see a local listing of files over here and you can click over to the remote version over here which is what the site I'm hooked up to now uh, under the the sites pane is a, a bunch of sites that I work on you can see here's the media temple account that CSS tricks is on you can double click these things and they kind of zoom open like that with a cool thing and it connects to the remote part of the site and loads up any images and stuff that I've been recently working on uh, it's pretty cool pretty cool uh, you won't see me using a whole lot of Coda on this show because uh, I'm just going to probably be working locally most of the time. Uh, Coda works for local files, but uh, there's another text editor that's that I prefer to use while working on local files, so we're going to move on to that next. So, like I said, I'm not going to use Coda on this show very much. Uh, because there's some local text editors that I prefer. Uh, the first one in this list, TextMate, is what I primarily use and what I'm going to use on this podcast for editing code. Uh, TextMate is an awesome text editor. It has all those features I mentioned earlier of like a coder's text editor with 
code highlighting and autocomplete and all that stuff. Let's look at a uh, basic TextMate file here. Uh, not much to look at. There's nothing in there yet. But since this is an HTML file, you can see up here, junk.html, it knows to be how to highlight things. I just pressed a, a left opening bracket, and you can already see it already added a right closing bracket, which is nice. So if I could do something like div id equals nav, you see I, I type a single open quote, and it automatically added that second quote. Very nice. Nav, as I scroll press the right arrow key and move past that and I'll do that little blink on the one so it shows me that I'm just I'm traveling past a, a close bracket and the, it shows me where the opening bracket was which is a nice little touch you can see it happen again here div yep so that's kinda neat um, it does something like if you're in in paragraph tags here and I type like elephant and close the p tag. It knows that any text within paragraph tags or within normal text tags that are just going to be showing up on website is going to be just regular text. This isn't code anymore. It's it's text that's going to show up on the website. So it's subject to spell check. So we can right click it and get correct spelling. So that's nice. There's not a lot of online code editors that'll spell check right in your code for you like that. Um, it knows how to highlight based on this menu down here with just all kinds of, you can't see very much of the menu there, but there's just all kinds of different languages that it can code for specifically. So that's nice. TextMate has all kinds of uh, regular things that you would expect from a text editor, uh, like grep, which is, you know, kind of advanced find replace technology. It has these bundles, which are little code snippets, so if you forget something, like in your CSS, if you need background, I know that's going off the screen, you can't really see it, but, uh, you know, it gives you all this, the, the, the code for CSS for, you know, all the different things you can do in here, which is kind of nice and convenient. Uh, line numbers, stuff like that, it's just a really nice uh, uh, program overall. It has it ties itself to the terminal, so you can you can auto open things in TextMate with simple terminal command. It's just pretty pretty smart, really. So that's TextMate. Uh, there's a couple t other text editors here. I thought I quickly mentioned before I use TextMate. I used BB Edit, which is also very nice. has a lot of the same features as TextMate. It just doesn't feel quite as nice to me anymore. It feels a little a little outdated. It's in, you know, some crazy version 11 or something. It's been around forever. Still, by all accounts, good. No problem with using it. I think it's around the same price. Uh, there's just, it just feels a little older. There's so much junk in the menus and so much stuff. Anyway, that's an option for you. I just don't prefer it. Text edit comes automatically with your Mac. It's free. It's already there. It's not really a coder's text editor it's you know it, by default it's it's rich text which means you know bolding and italics and font sizes and stuff which you definitely don't need for code uh, you can turn that stuff off you can use this to code in it you know there's you know here's a window you know you can code you can uh, uh, save this as an HTML file it will work uh, it's just not great. There's a couple of stupid things about TextEdit too. You know, if you open uh, an HTML file in TextMate by default, it'll try to render it like a web page. You know, I just don't see any purpose of why they shipped it like that. Uh, <laughs> Macs come with Safari. You know, if you want to look at an HTML file, you might as well open it in a browser and look at it in a proper browser. And chances are, if you're opening it in TextMate, you want to see that code. Anyway, just kind of dumb. Uh, in order to turn that off by default, there's some preferences here to, let's see, I think it's an open and save and ignore rich text commands in HTML files. I think that's what's going to, having that clicked is what's going to be able to open up an HTML file and have you actually be able to see the code there. So if you need to use text edit, you don't want to spend any money, it's there, it's free, you can use text edit. So there's that. So here's not necessarily a tool, but the final product of working with web design is the web page itself. So 
Uh, you're going to need browsers. You're going to need as many browsers as you can get your hands on. On a Mac, these are probably kind of the big three right here, Firefox, Safari, and Opera. They all have their charms and weirdnesses. I'm kind of a Firefox guy myself for some of the cool extensions I use, but Safari's fast and good as well. You know, Opera's amazing too. I just never really got that into it, but there definitely is some cool things like built-in BitTorrent and stuff. Not that that has anything to do with web design, but uh, those are the three browsers. You should definitely test any of your designs in all three of those browsers. But then there's the big dog, uh, Internet Explorer, you know, dominant market share still in web design. So how do you test for that on a Mac has been answered. Uh, there's, a, there's a number of different ways you could do that. We could do a whole podcast about that. The way I do it just recently is this VMware Fusion, which basically just allows you to run Windows simultaneously with OS X. Uh, it's pretty slick. Uh, if you've been reading the blog for a long time, I, I used to use Parallels and kind of endorse them. That was great and worked too. I've recently switched to VMware because of some specific features. That's, and it's 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 slick. It's cool. It's better than Parallels, I think. Um, but what that allows you to do is is run IE just like any other Windows user could. Uh, I keep my version of IE at IE six, uh, just because there's you know there's ways to install all the different versions of IE, but it's a little bit of a pain. And I think by default six is good because. 7 fixed a lot of those bugs, and it's better to see the bugs because that's what you're doing, you're testing. So, uh, yeah, check it out. IE6 right there in all its glory. I even have the Microsoft makes a web developer toolbar thing I can pop in and out there, which is sort of kind of like Firebug for Firefox. You can grab things and, and see what's going on with the website. So even in IE6, you can do troubleshooting. So, yeah, testing. It's beautiful. Okay, these last two rows, I'm rambling on a little long here, so I just want to touch on them quickly because they are definitely part of the tools of the trade. So I want to say a little something about each of them. Transmit is an FTP client. I mentioned that Coda uses the Transmit engine. So, uh, But if you just aren't into the Coda thing or don't want to spend the money for Coda, Transmit, I believe, is a little cheaper, and it's just a, a regular FTP client. It also has a lot of awesome features like saving bookmarks and making little droplets for uploading files. Uh, I actually still use it um, because it has uh, built-in support for Amazon Simple Storage or S3. So uh, it was really easy to, to hook up and upload files to my account that way. So that's what I'm using it for now. But very good FTP client from Panic. Uh, there's a couple other CS editors that I own that I don't use very often, but are sometimes nice diagnostic tools. Xylescope is, uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not sure, is, you know, you can open web page and target elements and see all the padding and margin affecting it and all that stuff. It actually uses the WebKit, the Safari engine, to render the pages, so the reason I'm, I don't use it all that often anymore is because I usually, you know, Safari's a good browser and it's, it, there's no problems with the layout. You know, I wish they made a Xylescope that used the IE engine. That would be pretty nice. Uh, CSS Edit is a uh, just pure CSS editor with, you know, tons of nice features in itself. Like, it's hard to go into all of what it does right now, but it's kind of a, a you know, there's a bunch of menus and, and, and selectors and stuff and drop downs to help you format your CSS. You know, you can create entire complicated CSS files in CSS Edit. Uh, without even having to look at the code, which is cool. Uh, it's hard not to mention Dreamweaver, pretty dominant in uh, in the field for being just a, a monster web design application. I don't use it a whole lot because it's ten, you know I just I don't need the WYSIWYG stuff of it. I just code by hand, but a lot of people might like that stuff. It kind of has a built-in sync with server thing going on that a lot of people use to upload their files and keep in sync their designs. That's cool, but I also don't use that really. So uh, I do have it around, though. There's one major thing that I always pop open Dreamweaver to do, and that's uh, the image map stuff. You know, uh, sometimes images need image maps. You know, like you can only click on you know the eyeball, and it does something. And 
uh, I just find myself popping open Dreamweaver every time I want to do that because it's just got a little graphical tool to make those image maps. So that's what I use that for. And then Flash and Illustrator, of course, you probably know what those do. Uh, I'm not a huge Flash guy, but I know enough to use it once in a while, tastefully, I hope. And Illustrator is just the vector master and is good for wireframe mock-ups and, and stuff like that. So this is my big toolbox. There's probably others I forgot. There's probably other ones you use that I don't. But that's kind of the rub on, on all the, the tools I'll be using on this podcast. So hopefully that was somewhat interesting. Uh, more to come. See you later. Bye.